Thank you. All right. Glad to be here. I think this is the last one for the day, and then we have a little panel. I feel like I need to take a tell a joke or something. You know, John and I were talking last night. What what's life after a newsletter life with this market the way it is? But uh, yeah, it's uh, a. Uh, a uh, good joke I heard recently, a 75-year-old woman went into her doctor to ask for a supply of birth control pills. And the doctor said, ma'am, you're, you're 35 years past childbearing age. Why would you possibly need birth control pills? She says, oh, they make me sleep better. Doctor puzzled, looks at her, how do the birth control pills make you sleep better? She says, oh, that's easy. I put them in the orange juice every morning of my 17-year-old granddaughter, and I sleep like a baby. <laughs> Anyway, I've been busy traveling. Uh, was last couple of weeks was up at the Precious Metals Summit in Beaver Creek, and uh, the week after that, Denver Gold Show. I'm from Denver, so uh, it was a good time to really reconnect with people in the industry. And uh, a lot of fund managers were in, were in attendance, so both were well attended. But uh, in the 35 years I've been an investor of junior mining shares, and in the last 15 of which as a newsletter writer. I've never seen a tougher market than what we've experienced these, these past few years. I've lived through many ups and downs, uh, the cycles during that time period, but this one has hurt the most. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, there's anybody that's been exempted from this pain and suffering. Even the best of the best, the top players have all been pummeled and humbled. Uh, it's interesting, during that 35-year time period, uh, there have been three major down periods which lasted for three years in duration before the market began to make its turn in the fourth year. We are in the third such period and we are in the fourth year of that last period. So based on the two previous three year uh, downturns, they always turn in the fourth year. Are we gonna make that turn? Um, good question. Um, the consensus I think at the uh, the Precious Metal Summit and the Denver Gold Show, where some of the sharpest people in the industry are presenting. And uh, I would say that the consensus seemed to be we're hoping for a turn soon, but things seem a little more muted, like we could drag along the bottom for another year or two. And I think the best thing that could happen for our industry right now to get our market going is for a big new economic discovery. Uh, to grab the market's attention, preferably, preferably in a good jurisdiction like Canada. And uh, maybe another Voises Bay, uh, a, a huge new high-grade polymetallic discovery. Um, you know, that's what the market needs. We, we need to get the market's attention. And I think Canada is the best place for that to happen. Uh, when the chips are down, I always say look to the Canadians. They have the biggest talent pool and the best areas for new discovery. Mining is a part of the Canadian heritage. No other country, in my view, does it better. And uh, that's a real credit to, to Canada. Why not Newfoundland? Why can't that discovery be in Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia? Uh, I think it's, it's possible. But how likely is this to occur with so few companies able to raise monies right now to do much in the way of exploration? Exploration is the, the cornerstone of our industry. Merger and acquisition activity this year seemingly has been a good harbinger of things to come, yet there is a feeling that, like I said before, things could be dragging on for another few years in their current state. That's the bad news. And regardless of how negative things may seem, I'm here to tell you that the markets will recover at some point. Bull markets follow bear markets, day follows night. No matter how dark or long the night may seem, the mining world will see another day. The only real question in my view is when. That seems to be the big question on everybody's mind. Um, everyone's trying to second guess this, but no one has a crystal ball. So it's a, it's a muted uh, optimism. I, would, I refer to myself as a pragmatic optimist. Uh, try to look at things in the most pragmatic manner and, and stay as optimistic as you can. It's a good way to live. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, right? Um, after attending both the gold shows, uh, Beaver Creek and Denver, there was about 110 mining companies at both shows. Um, these are the best of the best companies in the mining space right now. And, you know, at, talking with the guys, sitting in the discussions, going to lunch with everybody, um, these, these fund managers, they want to spend money. But, you know, they're flush with cash. They've had lot, lots of big returns from the Dow market. 
And they're looking at our sector, they're kicking the tires, but they're being extremely cautious. And uh, they're, they're being very, very selective. Um, let's see. Alan, the other thing I've noticed about the fund managers, John and I were talking about this last night. We remember periods where the fund managers would just be reckless. You know, come in, they had lots of money, they $5 million on this company, $2 million on this company, you know, and just spread money over a, a, a big, wide margin of the junior mining space. Uh, that, that's no longer the case, and, and now they're much more educated. They've been burned, they've been hurt. Uh, they're going to be a lot smarter about this. The majors were in attendance as well, Newmont, uh, Barrick, all the big boys. Uh, I know some of the higher-ups in Denver with Newmont, and they're getting ready to lay off. They're going to do major cutbacks. Uh, these things are soon going to be announced. So I see, uh, you know, there's still a lot of negativity, but uh, our growing world needs new discoveries. Um, I was telling somebody at lunch, I do this little presentation about um, the need for minerals, that I think the world takes it for granted that uh, where, these, where these minerals come from, how, how a cell phone is made. Everything that's in a cell phone comes from mining, right? I have a presentation I do with young people, uh, high school uh, age kids, and a uh, whole auditorium full. I ask them, how many here have a negative opinion of mining? Half the hands go up because in America, the public school system basically teaches that mining is not a good thing. Okay, they don't talk about the benefits, right? And in the industry, I think we're we don't need to be ashamed of what we do. We need to, you know, not take the aggressive, but we don't need to apologize for what we do in mining because mining is what provides all these things. Everything that's in a cell phone comes from mining. And I go through this thing and tell the kids how much, how many pounds of copper, lead, nickel, zinc they're going to use during their lifetimes as an American citizen, how many pounds of coal it will take to power those gadgets and gizmos and give them the lifestyle they've grown accustomed. And uh, after I explain all that and I say that, look around you, if, if it hasn't been grown, in other words, a tree, wood, or food, it has to be mined. And uh, even the wallboards in your house come from gypsum that has to be mined. So at the end of the presentation, I say, now based on uh, what I've just told you, how many people here have a negative opinion of responsible mining and not a hand goes up? So you see, with just a half hour presentation, we can turn the, the, the minds of people. Um, with the, the need for new discovery, the, the one point I wanted to make is we, we hope for a turn in the market, but we need to look at the pace of new discovery and make adjustments is how we invest. And today, you know, I, I just did this presentation to a retail group of people, so I kind of took parts and, and put this together because I realize this audience is much more educated in the mining sector. But <laughs> junior mining exploration, uh, I look at it as a research and development business model. Uh, the biggest potential for investment gains is with the junior exploration companies. That's where the big money is made. Before you invest money, of course, know which investment models work for your risk tolerance, investing style, and strategy. I take a lot of time to try to educate these retail people because I see this over and over again. People investing in things that they have no business investing in. They, they don't match their needs with the investments they're in. Uh, in the industry, we need to take more effort to help people. Uh, we'll, instead of these people getting burned, they could have success and they'd tell others and it would help our industry. Learn to mitigate ex exploration risk better than we have in the past. That's for everybody. All of us need to learn how to do that and I'm going to talk about that in a few more slides. The typical model for investing in junior mining shares is broken and in, and in my view will never be the same. Um, this is a sad fact that I think we all have to deal with and understand uh, as we move forward. Uh, the reason it's broken, um, excessive salaries, you know, uh, broker's fees, you know, that some of these brokers that do a financing are charging 8, 10, 12 percent of the overall financing. Um, expenses, expenses are, are higher than they should be. You know, whenever I go on the, an airplane and I see a junior mining executive riding first class as I'm going to the conference, it kind of pisses me off, okay? 
you know, these monies are sacred and, and most of this money needs to go on the ground. You can fly in coach to go to the show. Uh, it just sends a wrong message, I think. Increased regulatory environment has drastically increased legal and accounting expenses, not to mention the time it takes to deal with these issues for the, for the executives. Permitting times for drilling, development are getting longer and longer, meeting deeper and more extended burn rates than was typical just 10 years ago. Um, an example, <coughs> company that I like, excuse me, grab some water here. Um, Dolly Varden, great project up in northern BC. <laughs> People who are uh, geologists who know this area all point to this as a, an area for potential big discovery. Uh, it's SK Creek kind of material, uh, silver gold, silver, <coughs> and uh, you know, it started four years ago, uh, 30, 39 million shares out. Here we are in the fourth year. We now have 200 million shares out, and we haven't even done 10,000 meters of drilling. How do you go through that much money? Well, you, you keep have to financing at really low levels, and you're spending more money than you should be, and you end up in a situation where you're going to have to keep diluting current shareholders to get anywhere, despite the fact that the project's an excellent project. If it had 20,000 meters of drilling, we'd probably have made the discovery already. But here we are. All the regulatory stuff, all the legal hassles, all the extra expenses, blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a difficult thing. It's reason why the, one of the reasons I think this market is broken, the, the junior mining market as we, uh, as we know it. Low-hanging fruit, uh, easy outcrop has already been picked up in the good jurisdictions, meaning more blind drilling and longer discovery times in general. We're blind drilling in a lot of areas. And yes, with the increased better technology, it helps us look into the earth, which saves us some time and money. But uh, overall, um, you know, the areas where there's a lot of low-hanging fruit, they're just politically unstable. Retail and fund investors are getting fairly unfairly diluted in a much quicker time frame, so they're not happy. And when investors are not happy, it's not good for the industry. So uh, Rick Rule made a good comment at, uh, at the Beaver Creek. He felt like the industry really needs to take a, a look at itself, uh, pick itself up by the bootstraps, look in the mirror, and, and, and really change ways that we've done things. He said, we've all been immoral, he said. We've all, we've all done things to hurt our own industry that we can improve on and make better. I think he's right. Um, so, you know, there's less money going into the ground, it means less discoveries. Too many companies with little or no talent. Um, you know, I think John mentioned the point that moving forward, it's going to be a much smaller group of people that are going to get any attention. You know, all the boats aren't going to float when we do recover. Lots of companies are dead and gone. They're never coming back. It's just the way it is. How many, how many juniors are really needed to make the necessary discoveries? A lot less, because there's only so many good management teams. Aging talent base, retiring and not being replaced. This is one in Denver uh, for the last 12 years. I've had a luncheon every Christmas, first or second week of Christmas. Doug Silver, International Royalties, always organized this and got all the geos together. And, you know, in the United States, the, the mining capital is really either Reno or Denver, mostly Denver. Colorado School of Mines is there, Newmont's there. A lot of geos live there. And, uh, you know, I watched in the last 12 years, it used to be like 250 people go to this luncheon. We'd take over the whole restaurant. And as the years have gone by, last year, I don't think 40 people were there. Half of them are dead. They've died. They're gone. Who's to replace these people? I'm not seeing it. The kids aren't going into mineral geology at school. If they're going to the Colorado School of Mines, a lot of them are going into the oil and gas side where there's more money. Um, the, big, the big oil companies pay well right out of the chute. So where are these discoveries going to come from if we don't have the managerial talent and the, the, the exploration talent to make the discoveries and find them? Very discouraging. Uh, not getting boots on the groundwork done, relying too much on software programs in the office. You know, a lot of this software technology that I've seen, it, it sounds cool and it's good for promoters who want to pull the wool over people's eyes in some cases, but a lot of times you don't have the, the people who know how to interpret properly. And so it, it gets misinterpreted and then we're putting drill holes in the wrong place. 
uh, you can't skip the boots on the groundwork. It just has to get done. And I think uh, there's a realization that you know we need to get back to that. Fund managers are now more educated about the resource sector than they have in the past, so they're going to be much more, uh, they're not going to be as easy to sell. They're, they're really taking a, um, a hard, select approach about this. Most of you know the, the models of investing in juniors. I don't need to talk about the first four. You all, everybody in this room understands what those are. Uh, prospect generator basically just uses other people's money, a good example. Um, you know, you have uh, Riverside Resources or Eurasian Minerals. Altius has used both the prospect gener generator model very well, along with royalties. Um, joint venture model in, in a junior mining company that made a discovery. If the discovery was unique enough or good enough, they might be able to get a, a big company to come in and spend some money to prove it up. That's always a good model to work with. Uh, the royalty model, you know, the streaming model got a lot of attention the last few years. And uh, the problem I see with that is that there's too few development companies to put into their pool. Um, it's just limited, you know. Especially now that other people are wanting to get in the streaming business, it's pretty difficult to, to see uh, the long-term effects of that because there's, there's just not enough in the pipeline for them to have as a client. Um, till Capital, this is a new model. This is, uh, if any of you know Bill Sheriff from the resource um, sector, he uh, did very well in uranium. He was up in the Yukon uh, exploring uh, with his company up there. Bill always told me, I've, I've had a good relationship with Bill for a long time. Um, got to know him, fortunately, when I was uh, first, my first years in the newsletter business uh, in 2000, 2001. And Bill um, said to me, he says, Greg, wouldn't it be great if we could figure out a way to mitigate the risk and still invest in the junior mining sector? That would be a great model if we could ever figure it out. Well. Uh, a guy by the name of Bill Lupian, who is a top-notch trader, um, and Bill got together and put together Till Capital. And this model, I think, is, is very good. The last one we'll talk about is the, the common sense generator. That's a term I've coined um, trying to describe how I see the junior mining model evolving. We're going to have to use a lot more common sense from all standpoints in order to make this work. Uh, the Till Capital is a unique Bermuda, Bermuda domicile company engaged in the reinsurance business supported by a hybrid investment strategy. The non-traditional approach creates a company with diversified investments including royalties and physical gold holdings, well positioned for growth through the access to strategic deployment of capital, their goal to maximize opportunity, mitigate risk, and invest in assets and opportunities with significant upside potential. Shares outstanding 3.6 million, fully diluted 3.8. 40 million cash on hand, current share price $8.94. Book value based on liquid assets is $14 a share. Uh, they have a component uh, of income producing stream that's uh, over a six year track record. It's been between six and 17% per annum. So, um, you know, it's got good growth to it and then it has the component, 25% of the money right now is in, in junior mining shares. Uh, Management is in the process of buying back some of the shares that they feel are undervalued right now. So uh, the share structure is probably going to go down by another three or 400,000 shares. So Till Capital, uh, they merged two talented teams together to lead a, a unique uh, corporation primarily engaged in the reinsurance business. And they'll generate cash premiums of float derived from reinsurance policies. These premiums will be invested with an emphasis towards the natural resource sector. Till's team has extensive experience within the resource sector and financial markets, providing a neat perspective of evaluating investment and acquisition decisions powered by a reinsurance-based business model that provides low-cost capital. Uh, seems to make a lot of sense. I can tell you, the guy uh, that's the trader, I know him personally, and uh, I've watched him. Uh, he, the first, first quarter, they, uh, he made $2 million trading for the, for the, for the uh, corporation. Common sense generator, uh, you know, this is my optimistic view of the mining sector, where I think it's going to need to go in order for this to work. Um, like I said, I think the industry needs to clean itself up. We need to, you know, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, as Rick Rule said, and, and everybody needs to help. 
we need to project a better image for the mining space. Um, I'm often amazed why more mining company executives aren't promoting this, but in many cases they're trying to get a project permitted that may have some environmental things, so they're trying to take a low-key approach, you know. Um, this is unfortunate. Um, Anyway, remember only one in a thousand prospects makes it to an economic producing mine, that's exploration reality. But improve your odds by knowing the following. The complexity within our market is much greater than in the past. You have to step up to the plate. If you're going to invest in this sector, you've got to know more. Um, who are the companies that can make it in this cycle based on current circumstances? This was a, a topic of conversation at the Precious Metals Summit and the Denver Gold Show. Uh, basically, it's boiled down that people believe that there's just a small handful of companies that are really going to make it this cycle. Um, what is the single most important question you would like to answer about an exploration project of interest? Um, this, you know, group of guys gets together, we want to raise money, we want to drill this project. Okay, let's define this. What, what are we looking for? What kind of model are we trying to follow? What, what information do we need to get by spending this money okay where do we what, what are we looking for make sure you understand what exactly it is that you're looking for and if you don't get that what constitutes failure uh, what are the potential fatal flaws associated with the project of interest that that seemed to be I heard that a lot up at the summit you know this was a five-day summit up at Beaver Creek and, and four days in Denver and these are the, some of the wealthiest funds in the world that attend this conference. Um, some cases they're managing billions of dollars, not millions. So fatal flaws, every project has its warts, its bumps, its grinds. We need to know what those are before we invest. How much time and money will it take to get the answer to the most important questions? Question or questions. What will be the clues that they have failed? Who is the person giving me the answer? Is he or she really qualified to give an appropriate answer? In many cases, I can look at deals that I got involved with, and I, I certainly, with the knowledge I have now, I'd never get involved with these people at this point. You know, I, I just, they just didn't have the qualifications to give me the answer they were giving me. Do they have the experience to do what they say they are going to do? In other words, if, if all they've ever discovered is uranium, and then they're starting a gold company, you know, why, why does that translate, okay? What qualifies you to think you're gonna find a gold project when your experience in the mining business, exploration business has been with uranium? Another good question. Are they able to attract a solid joint venture partner that would get the market's attention? You know, the difficulty with, with a prospect generator or joint venture model is that you have to be very sharp to sell to a major. They're, they're not going to get involved with anybody. That's why people like Dave Cole, Eurasian Minerals, um, John Mark Stoudy, you know, from Riverside Resources, these guys are well known. They, they have a good track record, and the mining, the big mining people know them. Is the age of the rocks on the project correct for the model of discovery they are seeking? And as soon as the thesis that we started out, as, as soon as it's no longer valid, dump your shares and move on. If the thesis is no longer valid, you're now in the hope phase. And I've found in the hope phase very few times that works out for investors. So a uh, word about uranium. Um, existing contracts for producers at much higher uranium prices are either expiring or already expired. Companies like UEC, UR Energy, the darlings of the uranium space, at $20 uranium, many producers won't be profitable and, and will be unwilling to sign new contracts. What happens to them? This puts a major new thrust of emphasis on the uranium space once again. The question again is when and who would benefit the most? Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that something's got to happen in the uranium space, but I feel it's another year or two away. It's not imminent. Uh, but when it happens, there's going to be a real crunch. And uh, I think companies that may benefit, you know, Cameco, they've always been there. They seem like they, they will be in a good position timing-wise to make that work. Uh, a few others that I've been looking at lately. But a lot of the ones that are the darlings right now are really in trouble. So it's just something to take a note of. And just summarizing what I'm trying to say, you know, these, 
these half-hour talks, it's, it's so hard to squeeze in everything you'd like to talk about. But uh, I believe the market will turn, and when it does, it will turn with a vengeance. Um, the stadium example I was given to this retail audience, I was trying to help them understand how this market works and how volatile it is, you know, both up and down. It, it can turn on in a heartbeat. And it kind of feels to me, the way it feels right now, it feels like we're, we're getting ready for the hockey game. We're going to, going to see the hockey game. The, the stands are starting to fill, fill in. People are getting a beer, getting peanuts, popcorn, a hot dog. Uh, but the puck isn't, isn't ready to drop yet. And, uh, but we're, we're at least we're going into the stands for the game. And I think that's as good an analogy as I can give to how I feel about when the market will turn. New discoveries are desperately needed for a growing world. Successful exploration is where the big monies are made. We gotta, we gotta put the money in the hands of the best, most talented teams out there. We, those discoveries will be made. There's a, I was up looking at a project here in uh, Nova Scotia, a um, situation where a company, Minotaur, had spent seven million bucks looking for an IOCG target. And unfortunately, during the downturn, they uh, unfortunately let their claims go. Uh, by a mistake of theirs. Someone else picked them up and uh, did, did some VTEM work, followed up. Uh, they're now in talks with Minotaur and uh, they've actually hit a very significant, uh, um, had a very significant development with this VTEM because it shows exactly where Minotaur would have drilled had they had the time and money to finish their work there. So Minotaur is now telling them, you need to drill this. and. Uh, it has a lot of good copper showings at surface, and we'll see what happens on that one at Stakeholder Gold, SRC. Um, invest in the model that works for you and use more common sense in dealing with exploration companies for investment. The best companies right now are 75% cheaper than they were at the peak. The time to buy is now, and wait for the turn. Thank you very much for listening.